Okay, hey everyone, um, Kevin here with Divinely Design, and I think this is going to be my first video kind of on um, a series of uh, using a long arm machine to quilt, uh, specifically on an ANOVA. And what I thought I would do is do a series of videos that are on some of the specific features within the autopilot, which is the computerized quilting. Uh, I mentioned before that I'm interested in kind of that intersection of, you know, this sort of old um, handicraft of quilting and today's modern technology um, going along with, you know, the whole modern quilt movement we have today. Um, I find that really interesting. Uh, in, in addition to that, uh, my skills uh, in terms of uh, free motion quilting on a long arm are not very good. Um, I, I can do a little bit of free motion on a domestic machine if it's like a small project. Um, I've done a little bit of that and have done okay and been some, you know, happy with some of the results. But um, with a computerized machine, you get like amazing, you know, consistent stitching and all those great things. So uh, anyway, um, uh, I thought what I would do is do kind of a series of videos on some of the specific functions and just do like one function per video and take a look at it. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is um, on the, the um, autopilot is called a mask, right? To create, um, uh, use a shape in order to create a mask to define an area to either get rid of a pattern on the inside of that area or the outside of that area, okay? So what I have here is one of the dream big panels. Um, these are pretty popular. Let me get my camera a little bit down here. Okay. Um, these are super popular. They come in lots of different colors. Um, I forget what specific colorway this is, but um, they have um, these sort of big weaves in them. And what's been really popular is to quilt a different pattern in each of those leaf sections. Now, a lot of people do them freehand, but uh, I'm sort of specifically interested in, again, using the computer to do that quilting. Um, and I've done a bunch of them so far, so uh, what I thought I'd do is do a video on how I've sort of defined those specific areas. Let me bring in a little bit closer here. Okay, so hopefully you can see um, I've sort of outlined each of the petals. Um, I've sort of done like a double outline, right, to create this little gap here. And that's helpful because um, in defining the spaces, you know, there's a little bit of imprecision um, in getting those spaces right, although I've gotten a little bit better at it. Um, but this little gap here also helps to define each petal to sort of give you this blank space between the next petal. So like you can see, um, uh, you know, back here, uh, let's see here, let me come over here to this section. So here I have kind of this swirly pattern, right? And then up here I have a very geometric pattern, but that gives you that little break between the two patterns to make them a little bit more distinct. Okay, so what I want to do is um, quilt this specific leaf here, this shape. So on the ANOVA, uh, it has a function uh, called push pin. So uh, I can do it on the computer, I can do it here, but uh, the push pin itself lets me define a specific area. And let me just get my computer set up here. So I'm ready to go. Okay, so I can define a specific area using the sew head, and you'll see there's this little white button here. What I'm gonna do is take, um, this is almost like a target. So if you think of like right where the needle is going to land, that's where I'm going to put a, a virtual push pin. And I'm going to do that by hitting this white button. So what I'm going to do is follow this inner line here. And actually while I'm defining it, uh, what I have found is helpful is if I'm using this round foot, I want kind of, if you think about this space is divided into thirds, okay? So I want one third of this space to be over that line 
two thirds of it on the inside. And that gives me a very, very close to the edge here without going over, okay? So I'm gonna take my sew head and I'm gonna start at this corner here. And then I'm just gonna hit my white button and I'm gonna follow along Now, this is a pretty irregular shape, so um, I'm kind of doing a lot of pins. If you had a less irregular shape, you probably wouldn't need to do quite as many pins here to define it. So again, I'm just following that inner line. I'm overlapping my little round portion of uh, the foot there by about a third. And I'm going to follow this all the way around here. Now, I, again, I'm doing this on the Innova. I think they're, you know, the other um, brands have sort of a similar function. I, I don't know what they call it there, but I'm pretty sure they have the same kind of thing. All right, and then I'm just gonna bring it basically right back to where I started. Okay, now let's take a look at it on the computer. All right. And let's see if we can get this a little bit better. Okay, so you can see here, I have all of these little X's kind of in boxes. That's where I pushed that white button and that helped me to define the outline. Now, in the ANOVA, in the autopilot, I'm, I'm on the push pin menu here. So I've defined it all. I'm gonna tell the system I'm done. I'm done making my shape. And um, these pins, these little boxes here sort of get in the way just from visualizing it. So I'm gonna tell it, I, I don't wanna see them anymore and that'll take it off. Now you'll notice that that shape is in purple. Now in purple in the ANOVA, that means it's locked. So in order for me to use that as my mask, right, that's the shape of my outline of my petal, and that's what I want to use to define the shape where I'm going to put a pattern in here. So I need to unlock it. So I'm going to um, right click, and I'll get this menu, and I'm going to go to the last one here that says Group Manager. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down. I've done a bunch of work already. The last one I just made was this one here called Push Pin Pattern 4. And if I open it up by clicking that little plus, I can see right now it is DQ'd and locked, meaning this, the system wouldn't sew it if I told it to start sewing. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna queue it and unlock it. When I do that, now it turns green and I can actually click on it and select it. And that's what I want to do, okay. So I have my pattern, I can click on it and select it. Now I'm going to pick um, sort of the pattern I want to put in place. And I'm going to do this leaf pattern. Okay, now let me resize this a little bit here. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller to fit kind of where I want it to be. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now you can see if I zoom in here, notice that that pattern I picked, it goes outside of that border. Now it's a little hard to see. If I go in really closely, see here that the, um, the leaf pattern is sort of a dark green and my outside border is this light green. So if I click in really closely, hopefully you can see that. So this is my border and this is the actual pattern I want to quilt. Now to create the mask. So the feature I wanna look at is called the mask. So the mask here in the ANOVA is this little button here. Um, if I click on, um, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my outside border here that I created using my push pins. 
I'm going to click on the mask feature. Now, to create my mask, let me zoom out here a little bit so you can kind of see what happens. I'm going to tell the system to build it, right? I selected the out the border first that I wanted. Now I'm going to say system build that, okay? And you'll notice it'll turn green for a second as it tries to build it and follow my outline. And then when it's done, it turns blue. Now I'm going to say, okay, that's good, right? That's, oh, that's great. You did exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to click on the border again, and then it will turn red. So right now I have defined it and we're in the process of trying to cut out some area of it. Now I want to select the pattern that's going to get cut and that's this outside leaf pattern. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to come down to the side here and I'm going to hit accept. Okay. And then it's going to crop out everything that was outside of that border. Now there's a selection over here on the side where I could have done the inside as well. Um, another handy feature is this one that I have checked is continuous sew. So when I start sewing, it's going to build this pattern so I don't have to continually start and stop and break thread. If I wanted it to sew the outside of this border that I've created as well, that's another option down here to hit sew mask outline. Okay. Now I didn't want it to do that, so I left that unchecked, but I could have. Okay, so I'm all finished sort of doing the work on the computer. Um, uh, that's what's going to sew, just what you see in green there. So let's go back to the, comp uh, to the, um, the quilt. And so it's going to be this one right here. Let me see if I can get you a little bit closer. This one right here. Okay. All right. So we're going to start. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell it to start sewing. And it's saying it's all ready. I'm going to hit continue. So it's going to go to where it wants to start sewing. I'm going to pick up my bobbin thread. Lock my stitch there. And then I'm going to start sewing. Okay, so I'm going to let this go. I'm not going to really talk, but I'm going to let it sew. Um, and I might try to speed this up a little bit. I'm not sure yet. I'm using, I'm using new software, so we'll see. But it, this shouldn't take that long, so. Okay, so that's all done. Um, let me see if I can get a little bit of a closer look here. Um, so you can see it stayed pretty good um, by defining those boundaries. It did not cross over um, anywhere. I'm trying to get a little better of a view here. Okay, so it did a pretty good job. Um, and that's not the only way you can create um, the mask. You don't have to use the sew head and that white button. Um, you can just pick uh, like a circle or a square that is a pattern that exists in the Nova already and use that as your uh, the border that you want to define your shape for. But this is a really cool way when you have those irregular shapes or a very specific area on your quilt that you want to put sort of a, a pattern into and not go over other areas, the mask feature is really excellent. So, all right, that's my quick function, um, functional feature video for the Anova uh, long arm. And uh, tell me um, if you are a quilter and you have an Anova, um, do you use the mask feature? What's your favorite way to use the mask feature? Or if you have a different brand like a Bernina, 
um, or a gamel? Do you have a similar function on your long arm that you will use when you use robotics or an autopilot or whatever it is? So, okay, that's it for me here at Divinely Designed and check back more for more uh, quilty and crafty videos. Okay, everybody, thanks, bye. Okay, so here is the finished um, panel. And I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, now, you can see, um, you know, the outlining was sort of free motion, and I'm still not great at some of that, so my lines aren't super smooth in some places. Um, but I do like how the outlining sort of offsets the pedal and makes the pattern kind of stand out as opposed to having, you know, the patterns kind of run right up against each other. But um, this was also a really good sort of exercise to um, practice some of the patterns in my machine. Um, this one was really fun. This was a, a, a sort of a nurse themed one. So they had this little hat in there. Um, but it was also sort of a good way to to practice some of those and see what they look like. This one was super cute. Um, it, it's called Australian Animals and there's a little platypus and a kiwi and there's a kangaroo and a koala. Um, super cute pattern. Uh, but just to get a sense of kind of you know what they look like when they're actually stitched out. Um, the center section I ended up doing a cross hatch. I actually did kind of a complicated masking for the center where I created this shape um, using one of the other features uh, in the computer to sort of make the shape and then I used that as a mask uh, for this cross hatching uh, so the cross hatching just ends up around that shape which I thought was pretty cool and I did that in this kind of green color to make it stand out a little bit too um, the edges, I'm, I'm pretty happy with. Um, I did free motion feathers, and they're coming along. You know, still not, you know, perfect, but they're looking pretty good. I'm, I'm overall really happy with um, kind of how they looked. Um, these, these definitely could have been better, right? The sort of the ends I need to kind of work on getting that spacing a little bit better. But um, some of this, uh, you know, free flowing with um, on the sides here looks pretty good. Uh, again, the backtracking kind of along the middle, not perfect, but um, overall pretty good. But backtracking on the feathers, not bad, you know, sort of some bobbles here and there, but again, getting better, getting better, practice, practice. So uh, my sides, I did these a little bit later, so they ended up looking a little bit better there. So, okay. Well, that's it for this video. Um, and uh, comments, questions, let me know. Like I said, you know, as a new long arm quilter, I'm sure I'm going to make mistakes. So I'm definitely interested in hearing um, your suggestions, your experiences. Uh, uh, and if you have questions, I'm, you know, happy to try to answer them or perhaps research them. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody, and um, have a happy quilting day.